In 20th century discussions of Karl Marx's economics, the transformation problem is the problem of finding a general rule by which to transform the values of commodities into the competitive prices of the marketplace. This problem was first introduced by Marx in Chapter 9 of the draft of Volume 3 of Capital, where he also sketched a solution. The essential difficulty was this. Given that Marx derived profit, in the form of surplus value, from direct labor inputs, and that the ratio of direct labor input to capital input varied widely between commodities, how could he reconcile this with the tendency toward an average rate of profit on all capital invested? Marx's theory. Marx defines value as the number of hours of labor contained in a commodity. This includes two elements. First, it includes the hours that a worker of normal skill and dedication would take to produce a commodity under average conditions and with the usual equipment. Second, it includes the labor embodied in raw materials, tools, and machinery used up or worn away during its production. In capitalism, workers spend a portion of the working day reproducing the value of the means of subsistence represented as wages, and a portion of their day producing value above and beyond that, referred to as surplus value, which goes to the capitalist. Since, according to Marx, the source of capital profit is this surplus labor of the workers, and since in this theory only new, living labor produces profit, it would appear logical that enterprises with a low organic composition would have a higher rate of profit than would enterprises with a high organic composition. However, in models of classical perfect competition, higher rates of profit are not generally found in enterprises with a low organic composition, and low Low profit rates are not generally found in enterprises with a high organic composition. Instead, there is a tendency toward equalization of the rate of profit in industries of different organic compositions. That is, in such models with no barriers to entry, capitalists are free to disinvest or invest in any industry. A tendency exists towards the formation of a general rate of profits, constant across all industries. Industries. Marx outlined the transformation problem as a theoretical solution to this discrepancy. The tendency of the rate of profit toward equalization means that, in this theory, there is no simple translation from value to money, e.g., one hour of value equals $20, that is the same across every sector of the economy. While such a simple translation may hold approximately true in in general Marx postulated that there is an economy-wide systematic deviation according to the organic compositions of the different industries, such that one hour of value equals $20 times T, where T represents a transformation factor that varies according to the organic composition of the industry in consideration. In this theory, T is approximately 1 in industries where the organic composition is close to average, less than 1 in industries where the organic composition is below average, and greater than 1 in industries where the organic composition is higher than average. Because Marx was considering only socially necessary, simple labor, this variation among industries has nothing to do with higher paid, skilled labor versus lower paid, unskilled labor. This transformation factor varies only with respect to the organic compositions of different industries. After Marx, Engels Friedrich Engels, the editor of Volume 3 of Capital, hinted since 1894 at an alternative way to look at the matter. His view was that the pure Marxian law of value of Volume 1 and the transformed prices of Volume 3 applied to different periods of economic history. In particular, the law of value would have prevailed in pre-capitalist exchange economies, from Babylon to the 15th century, while the transformed prices would have materialized under capitalism. See Engels' quotation by Morishima and Catifors, p. 
310. Engels' reasoning was later taken up by Meek and Nell. These authors argued that, whatever one might say of his interpretation of capitalism, Marx's value theory retains its usefulness as a tool to interpret pre-capitalist societies because, they maintain, in pre-capitalist exchange economies there were no prices of production, with a uniform rate of return on capital. It hence follows that Marx's transformation must have had a historical dimension, given by the actual transition to capitalist production at the beginning of the modern era. In this case, this true historical transformation could and should take the place of the mathematical transformation postulated by Marx in Chapter 9 of Volume 3. As all Althusser and Balabar and others have pointed out, this proposal runs counter to Marx's own ideas, as expressed in Marx. The point at issue is not the role that various economic relations have played in the succession of various social formations appearing in the course of history, but the position within modern society. Moreover, the available quantitative research by economic historians has not generally in or Stengel's view of antiquity and the Middle Ages as a value, epoch, in the Marxian sense, see, for instance, Hicks and Gondolier. Other Marxist views. There are several schools of thought among those who see themselves as upholding a furthering Marx on the question of transformation from values to prices, or modifying his theory in ways to make it more consistent. According to the temporal single system interpretation of capital advanced by Alan Freeman, Andrew Kleeman, and others, Marx's writings on the subject can be interpreted in such a a way as to remove any supposed inconsistencies. Modern, traditional Marxists argue that not only does the labor theory of value hold up today, but also that Marx's understanding of the transformation problem was in the main correct. Political economic readings of capital, such as Harry Cleaver's reading Capital Politically Redefine Exploitation as a Direct Control of Work Time, unrelated as such to distribution. These readings are usually associated with the autonomous strand of Marxism, which focuses on production as the key economic side within society. These readings of capital are typically hostile to economics as such, and consider the transformation problem unimportant because they see all social arrangements in capitalism as politically determined contests between classes. In the probabilistic interpretation of Marx advanced by Emmanuel Farjun and Moshe Makova in Laws of Chaos, they dissolve the transformation problem by reconceptualizing the relevant quantities as random variables. In particular, they consider profit rates to reach an equilibrium distribution, a heuristic analogy with the statistical mechanics of an ideal gas leads them to the hypothesis that this equilibrium distribution should be a gamma distribution. Finally, there are Marxist scholars who hold that there exists no incontestable logical procedure by which to derive price magnitudes from value magnitudes, but still think that it has no lethal consequences on his system as a whole. In a few very special cases, Marx's idea of labor as the substance of value would not be openly at odds with the facts of market competitive equilibrium. These authors have argued that such cases, though not generally observed, throw light on the hidden or pure nature of capitalist society. Thus Marx's related notions of surplus value and unpaid labor can still be treated as basically true, although they hold that the practical details of the workings are more complicated than Marx thought. In particular, some have suggested that since aggregate surplus value will generally differ from aggregate profit, the former should be in fact treated as a mere precondition for the latter, rather than a full explanation of it, using input-output data and empirical proxies for labor values. Sheikh and Ochoa have provided some statistical evidence
evidence to show that, although no incontestable logical deduction may be possible of specific price magnitudes from specific value magnitudes, even within a complex model, even a 93% Ricardian theory of labor value appears to be a better empirical predictor of price than its rivals.